Hi, good morning. Grace and peace from God our Father through our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill, and it's good to greet you this day as we dwell in the Word for a daily devotion. Today is Thursday. It's July 2nd, 2020, and I greet you as we begin this new day together. I want to read today from Romans 7, and here are the words from Paul. Paul writes, Do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only during that person's lifetime. Thus, a married woman is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she's discharged from the law concerning the husband. Accordingly, she'll be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law. And if she marries another man, she's not an adulteress. In the same way, my friends, you have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who's been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. While we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are discharged from the law, dead to that which held us captive, so that we are Slaves, not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. Here ends the reading. So as you dwell on that word today, what jumps out at you? Um, what questions maybe does this raise? Uh, and how do you feel God's nudge here from this passage? The thing that jumped out at me, I think, is that... Um, this understanding that we died to the old law and that now we are freed to bear fruit for God. That somehow there's a way of this world that pulls us back, reduces our potential, causes us to want to satisfy um, the desires of low-hanging fruit versus pushing ourselves to, to greater things, to bigger things. Um, in some, and so, I think one of my professors in seminary used to call that secondary gain. Uh, in other words, when you want to do something that has a, a certain goal to it, um, and then you fail because you get tempted or you get you get sidetracked, there's something about the secondary gain. There's a gain of that sidetracking that causes you to want to not push for, further or harder. An example would be like on a diet. You know, you want to lose those 20 pounds. Um, seems like a great thing to do. You and your mind picture yourself in that new swimsuit for the summer uh, or whatever, new clothing. And then you pass by the bakery in Kaboom. Uh, the secondary gain of the taste of that fat and carbohydrate and sugar just excites you so much that you lose sight of the primary gain and the secondary gain captures you back. Anyway, that's what I try to tell myself uh, when we do this. But today's different. It's about God promotes us toward the primary gain and helps us through his son's death on the cross to reduce the secondary gain of sin that's around us. And this is what I, re I believe um, that Luther referred to when he said, every day when you wash your face, remember your baptism. So every time we begin worship, every time we begin our day, every time we simply just take pause before our next thought or our next action or our next breath, know that we are called to new life with a primary gain. And it's the life of the Spirit that promises to lead us because this is the advocate, remember, the counselor, the one that Jesus sends into the world to accompany us, that will never leave us. And that's what we are to follow. So always, this thing also, this passage also reminds me of how we do worship. In the Lutheran worship, we gather together um, and you know, we come from all places and here we are in this point of worship. And the first thing we do after we greet one another is that we confess our sins. And uh, it's a powerful moment, I believe. And so um, I want to share that portion of, of what we do at the beginning of the service so that we can do that together this morning. We begin by saying, we gather today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we say, amen, or so be it, or thanks be to God. Uh, and then we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. 
And then we go on to say, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we pray this prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We've sinned against you in our thought, in our words, in our deeds, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole hearts. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And then we receive the absolution in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. And then we say, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then the next thing we say is the peace of the Lord be with you. In other words, this cleansing of sin removes the burdens on us and frees us to see beyond the secondary gains to the primary gain. And there's a sense of openness towards God and fill, fulfillment of the Spirit in our lives so that we have this sense of peace, a peace that passes all understanding. And we're called to know that peace and to, to share that peace. You know, oftentimes when I'm going to worship on a Sunday, uh, I, I'll we sing this in our worship uh, as well. It's, it's from Psalm 51, and it's a song, psalm of lament that David was, uh, had written. But I often sing this to myself as I'm driving to worship, and I want to offer this as a prayer um, for us to close for today and blessings on your day. So let us pray uh, using part of the words of Psalm 51 uh, as a closing prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me, Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Amen. Hey, blessings on your day, and may God continue to be a big part of your life as you breathe in the Spirit and the presence of God, and breathe out by walking and living in Christ and serving others. Peace.